We at Troptex believe that autonomous driving is the future of transportation. And cameras play a vital part on that road to full autonomy. Now, with the help of Troptex active alignment technology, we are making an important contribution to the future of transport. Um, but then the question arises, what is active alignment? Now, when you're starting out off with a, a camera module project, um, your camera consists of a lens, which is inside of a lens housing, and a sensor PCB. Now on the right, you can see a, a typical example. Um, now what needs to be done is that the lens needs to be aligned towards the sensor or the other way around. And all of that while actively reading the image data from the sensor. This is what active alignment is. Now with active alignment, um, oh no, with the with the camera uh, module project, there are typical hardware toler tolerances which need to be considered when starting off with a project like this. For example, the sensor placement on a PCB can have a tolerance of plus or minus 50 microns uh, in the X and Y direction. Then the lens diameter uh, can have tolerances uh, of 25 microns, or the focal length of that lens can uh, vary by 2%. And then you mount that lens inside the lens housing, and then you also get tolerances, for example, tilt, as you can see in this example on the right, the lens is a bit tilted inside the housing. And then the lens can also be decentered within the housing, which means the optical axis of the lens does not align with the mechanical axis of the housing. And all of these tolerances lead to an uncontrollable chain, which we need to be able to um, control while actively aligning modules. So what is the what are the goals of active alignment? Now we're trying to maximize the usable sensor area, minimize the blurred image areas, and also minimize the image rotation. And we're doing all of that to achieve opti optimal image quality across the entire field of view. Now, the question arises, what is image quality? Image quality basically breaks down to three main points, resolution, contrast, and contour sharpness. Now on the right hand side, you can see an example of low contrast and high resolution, or the other way around, or a high contrast and high resolution. Now typically what you'd want is a high contrast and high resolution at multiple distances. Um, but this definition of image quality highly depends on the application that you're looking at. Now in active alignment, there are six degrees of freedom. There's the decentering, also called bore sight. Um, and this means that your optical axis of the lens, as you can see on the right, does not align with the uh, axis of your sensor. There is a bit of an offset. Then there is best focus, and this is in the Z direction. Um, and this is basically your image plane not being on the same plane as your sensor plane. Then the other degrees of freedom are your lens being tilted around the X or Y axis. Uh, and this is your image plane not being parallel to your sensor plane. Looking at the rotation around the Z axis, your mechanical reference might not be um, in parallel to your sensor. And this can uh, result in issues when, when mounting the camera module inside your vehicle, for example. Now let's take a look at one of these degrees of freedom, or two in this case. So let's look at the tilt alignment error. So what happens when there's a tilt alignment error? As you can see on the right, there will be a partially defocused image area. On the right hand side, um, you might perceive objects like a street sign a little bit more blurrier. 
a little bit more blurry than on the left hand side where the image is in focus. Now this will lead to your machine vision algorithms struggling with object detection for these traffic signs, for example. Now your object detection struggling will then in turn lead to your maximum detection distance shrinking. Now, how severe um, can that actually be? So we looked at a example camera setup. We had a camera with a 20 megapixel um, resolution, uh, 25 millimeter EFL. The lens F number was 1.4 with a 2.4 micron pixel pitch of the sensor and a detection threshold of 50% MTF. So with these example uh, setups, we calculated a maximum detection distance of 45.3 meters. Now with a tilt error of one arc minute, as shown previously in the um, mechanical tolerances, this one arc minute can lead to a maximum detection distance of just 39.3 meters. So it drops by six meters. And especially moving at high speed, six meters can be crucial. Now with the tri-optics alignment, we can uh, get this error down to 0.15 arc minutes. And what this will mean is that the reduction of maximum detection distance only comes down to 15 centimeters as compared to six meters as before. Now, looking at this example, we came up with the ADS camera requirements. Now for your ADS cameras, ideally you would want homogeneous image quality across the entire field of view. And what's even more important is that you want the homogeneous image quality, image quality um, across all camera modules of your final production line. So, you, for example, you you train in a machine learning algorithm with on on images generated by one camera setup, and you're trying to apply that same machine vision algorithm onto a different camera setup. But those cameras are different and they perceive objects differently, then your machine vision algorithm might not be much worth to you. So you want a minimal deviation across all your camera modules. Now, how do we uh, align, actively align camera modules? So we use collimators, which you can see on the right, the, the black um, objects. And these collimators, they generate objects at desired distances, for example, at infinity. Collimators uh, use a, a light source, a reticle, to then uh, project that uh, object of that reticle onto a collimator lens, and then we project that onto the lens of the camera that we're trying to build. The lens is held in place, and the sensor PCB on the bottom right, which is connected to a six degrees of freedom axis, is then aligned to the lens. Now, using a, a dome, as seen in this example, with optionally motorized, uh, focusable collimators in comparison to a chart, um, is that we can cover field of views of, of up to 180 degrees, there is no relay lens required, which we'd need to actively align this module. And we can generate objects at finite or infinite distances. Um, these can also be freely adjusted, so we're very flexible in this regard. And the targets that we generate are homogeneously illuminated. And then using motorized collimators, we can also run remeasurements after glue curing. Now, the maximum performance of such a system, it actually breaks down to the repeatability of all mechanical axes and also the repeatability of the software algorithms. Now, for years and years, we have 
improved our software algorithms um, that as such that we're able to achieve um, great positions. On the right, you can see an example of one of our through focus scans. So what we do is that in each corner, there is a sign star and in the middle there's one too. So for each of those regions, we um, move the, the camera in the Z direction and then capture the, the sharpness curves. So the all called the MTF curves. And then we align them all together and then the entire image is sharp as seen in this example. Now, what are the requirements of tomorrow? So what we have found is that there's a trend towards larger sensors, smaller pixels, and higher pixel density. And what this means is that there's a trend towards greater apertures. And this will result in narrower through focus curves, which then in turn lead to more sensitive tilt alignment. Now on the right hand side, you can see the through focus curve for one lens and an aperture of f2.0. Now if we um, use a greater aperture with an f number of just 1.0, this through focus curve becomes much narrower. And now if you're able to reach a repeatability of plus or minus 2.5 microns, you will reach a delta of 2% when aligning the uh, wider or the, the lens with the uh, smaller aperture. But then looking at the lens with the greater aperture, you will already be into a delta of 10%. Now what this means is for both of these cases, we calculated the maximum detection distance of the traffic sign that we showed you earlier. Now, when at the peak, we reach a maximum detection distance of 38.5 meters, and losing 2%, we drop to 37 meters, so by 1.5 meters. So with this through focus curve, um, it's actually not that uh, much of a deal. So, but then looking at the, the greater aperture, the delta of 10%, the maximum detection distance drops from 52 meters to 37 meters, so by 15 meters. And this is a lot. So when actively lining a lens like this, you will need to be much more precise. Now, what we offer is a unique service from optical sensor projects and all the way to the left starting with the joint optimization of camera components for the process of active alignment. We can also inspect your lenses with our Image Master HR for example. Then we get to the actual active alignment process as you can see here in the middle. We use our ProCam Align Smart Machine for that. Then there's oven curing involved. And right after oven curing, you would want a final quality control. And we do that with our CamTest Smart devices. And then leading up to mass production or series production, um, we offer the ProCam TT solutions. And this was designed for high throughput. Now our competitors is a fully automated camera production line. As you can see in this example on the top right, there you can see one of those production lines. Now this incorporates our ProCam TT, um, which is the, the square object on the left, which is being loaded and unloaded by robots. And this aligns the camera module, um, does UV curing of the, the glue, then the camera modules are being uh, placed into an oven for oven curing. And then after oven curing, we use our cam test end of line station to check the quality. Now, what did we learn? So we learned that um, precise camera alignment is vital for the best image quality. And we can do that. So 
we are equipped for the future. We can offer you high precision and we can not only do it well, we can also do it fast. And we also offer mass production solutions. So if you would like to get in contact with us, feel free to contact my colleague Martin. You can see his contact details right here or look at our website of the automotive website or the ProChem products website. Thank you very much.